Hello, this is Rochelle Agatha, and this is the lecture on managerial accounting for standard cost and variances. And there are a lot of equations in this chapter, so um, as you go through and you're, you're reading, you might want to make just a little cheat sheet on the side if they don't come easy for you. So the first objective is to explain how and why standard costs are developed. Standard costs are developed for a budget for a single unit of product, to benchmark for evaluating actual costs, and the types of standard costs are, um, there's ideal perfection standards, they don't allow for any inefficiencies, which is really impractical, and then there's the practical, attainable standards, allow for normal amounts of waste and, and inefficiency. The information used to develop and update standards, um, you look at past usage of material and labor, which could be, past could be one month, one week, one year, it depends on what you're producing or what you're looking at, current cost of inputs, and future changes. And remember, this chapter really sticks with manufacturing, but once again, this could be used in any kind of service line where you're looking at cost. You compute standard cost for direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Here's our first equation. Your direct materials are your standard quantity of direct material times your standard price equals your standard cost. So this is your, just your basic equation. And then for direct labor, it's the same thing. Your standard quantity of direct labor times your standard price equals your standard direct cost of direct labor. Then you have your manufacturing overhead. Lots of words here. And as we move through the slides, they're going to get rid of the words. So you might want to make a little cheat sheet, as I mentioned. Your total estimated variable manufacturing overhead divided by your total estimated amount of, of the allocation base is your variable manufacturing overhead rate. Your standards done based on the same equation, but you're using standards. And then your fixed manufacturing overhead rate is your fixed manufacturing overhead divided by your total estimated amount of allocation base and then you have your standard fixed so it's a just a lot of words for a very basic equation and here's a little example exhibit 11-1 in your book where you have your direct materials and then you have this standard quantity times the standard price so this came from somebody in a book it makes it look really easily but um, somebody created this by looking at those different variations we previously spoke about so there's your standard cost per case then you have your direct labor so it must somebody has calculated and figured out it takes 0.05 direct labor hours times twenty two dollars to get your direct labor standard cost per case there's your variable there's your fixed and you add them all up and now you have your standard cost per case Nowadays with computers, this is much easier than it used to be when things were all done with paper. Sustainability and standard cost. Many companies re-engineer their products and packaging. They look at advances in environmental sustainability and whether it saves money or not. You have to rethink your direct material quantity and price standards. Standards for the amount of waste from the production process, things like air pollution, scrap, wastewater, anything related to um, waste. And government regulation always comes into play in these um, types of calculations. All of a sudden, the government could change something and add an added value or add a layer of regulation that's going to add cost. Using standard cost to develop the flexible budget. This is on page 658 in your book. So here's a little um, example where you have your direct material, your direct labor, and your variable manufacturing overhead. There's your variable cost. Then you have your actual cost. Then you have your flexible budget. Now you have your flexible budget variance. Keep in mind, in this, in my accounting lab, they're going to make you put everything in as positives and put this little F or this little U in, where F is favorable, U is unfavorable, so they don't use brackets or negatives, as, whereas in real life, when you do these kinds of calculations and you're using Excel, the, the unfavorables are going to fall out with brackets around them, so it, it's just the way that they, they do this in this text. Objective two is to compute and evaluate direct material variances. So when the amount of the materials purchased is the same as the amount used, you can split the flexible budget between a price and a quantity variance. Okay, and we did previously talk about this in the, in the prior chapter. So exhibit 11-4 in your book gives you this slide, which is very cool. And here's some more acronyms, your actual, actual cost. Um, and they give you your actual quantity times your actual price is your actual cost. Your actual quantity at standard price is actual quantity times standard price. And your standard cost allowed is your standard quantity allowed times your 
standard price. I don't know why they have that Z there. Should be an A. Um, then you have your price variance. So you get your your actual minus your um, standard, or and then you get your quantity variance. So here's a nice bunch of set of new equations that's, that are really not that complicated. You just need to get them down and get the acronyms down. So your total variance is made up of a quantity piece and a price piece. Your direct material variances are comprised of direct materials price variance and a quantity variance. So we're going to go through the same kind of thing for labor, um, material and overhead. So here's your formula. Your direct material price variance is your actual quantity times your actual price minus your standard price. And then your direct uh, material quantity variance, here you go again. So you get your standard price times your actual quantity minus your standard quantity allowed. And at the very end of this, I'm going to go through three short little examples to put numbers to these for you. When you compute your direct material variances, um, when the quantity of direct materials purchased differs from the quantity, you're going to get a direct material price variance and a quantity variance. You're going to get both, which complicates the analysis, which is why it's very important for uh, managerial accountants and financial analysts to understand these concepts. Now we're going to compute our direct labor variances. It's the same concept, just labor versus materials. So you get your direct labor rate variance and your direct labor efficiency variance. They call it efficiency. So your direct labor rate um, variance is your actual hours times your actual rate minus your standard rate. And your efficiency is your standard rate times your actual hours minus your standard hours allowed. And this is on page 667, 11-9, so you might want to um, print this out or add this to your little cheat sheet of formulas. But here's, here they are on a little summary. Then objective four is to explain the advantages and disadvantages of using standard costs. The advantages are it, it provides a benchmark, it's useful in budgeting, it provides motivation, it simplifies bookkeeping. The disadvantages are you could have outdated inaccurate standards, lack of timeliness, focus on operational performance measures and visual management, lean thinking, increase in automation and decrease in direct labor, unintended behavioral consequences. There's a lot of disadvantages to standard costing, which can be overcome by having your standard cost um, advantages looked at more carefully, such as updating more often, using technology, and really um, making sure the person or the people that are doing the standard cost understand the risk mitigation factors for disadvantages. Objective five is to compute and evaluate variable overhead variances. Okay, so here's the meat of it. Um, you have two parts, a variable overhead rate and a variable overhead efficiency. It's also called variable overhead spending. Tells whether more or less was spent on variable overhead than expected for the hours worked. Your formula is your actual hours times your actual rate minus your standard rate. And your variable overhead efficiency variance tells you how much of the total variable overhead is due to using more or fewer hours of the allocation base than anticipated. Lots of words for a pretty simple formula. The standard rate times the actual hours minus the standard hours allowed. The theme, I hope you can see the theme in these formulas. It's, they're all very simple. You just need to make sure you put the right parts into each formula. Objective six is to compute and evaluate fixed overhead variances. Okay, so we talked about the, the variable. Now let's go through the fixed. Fixed overhead budget variance and a fixed overhead volume variance is, is what makes up the budget variance. It's also called the fixed overhead spending variance. It measures the difference between actual fixed overhead cost incurred and budgeted fixed overhead cost. And the formula is your fixed overhead budget variance is your actual fixed overhead minus your budgeted fixed overhead. And your fixed overhead volume variance is your budgeted fixed overhead minus your standard hours um, allowed times your standard rate. So stepping back and thinking way back in financial accounting how all you had was actual minus budget. Now you're seeing you have all kinds of things going on when you look at, at things from a manager standpoint. In essence, it measures the utilization of fixed capacity costs. Okay, so basically you say if production volume is greater than anticipated, then fixed overhead has been over-allocated, and the fixed 
overhead volume variance is favorable. If production volume is less than anticipated, then fixed overhead has been under allocated and the fixed overhead volume variance is unfavorable. There's an appendix in this chapter and I'm going to flip through these slides rather quickly, but I do, I did assign a problem to this. Um, it's where you take your um, st standard cost accounting and you book it through your GL basically. So you record inventory related cost at standard cost rather than actual cost. It saves on bookkeeping cost. It isolates price and efficiency variances as soon as they occur. Each type of variance will have its own GL account. The manufacturing cost flows through inventory and at the end of the period the variance accounts are closed to cost of goods sold to correct for standard cost variances to actual cost. So here's just an example and, and work this through your chapter so you can see where the numbers are coming from but first they're booking um, the raw materials purchases which is um, not a typical GL only you see the direct material price variance coming through here. So it's to record the purchase of the raw materials. Then they use um, record the use of the direct material. So you have your work in process, your direct material quantity variance, and your raw material inventory. So this kind of brings back topics from the very first chapter, very first one or two chapters. Then you record your direct labor costs. So you put your work in process and your direct labor rate variance. So it's going in its own bucket. And then you have your direct labor efficiency variance and your wages payable. So everything flows through its own little GL account, so it's easy to see. Then you have your manufacturing overhead cost incurred, so you book all that with your var um, various accounts. Then you allocate your overhead, so you put your work in process and you have your manufacturing overhead and your fixed, uh, fixed and variable. Then you record the completion, the finished goods inventory and the work in process goes through up into finished goods. And then you can record the sale and release of inventory, so here you have um, you you sold inventory and you have you didn't, you went to AR or cash depending on what it was and then you have your cost of goods sold and your finished goods inventory so all of the details are in the appendix then you close your manufacturing overheads so you have your different variations closing through so you closed your variable and then you close your fixed this is like I mentioned a very good refresher for you and then you have your standard costing income statement. So you can see that you have your sales revenue at standard cost, and then you have your budget sales revenue variance, getting sales revenue actual, cost of goods sold at standard, and then you have all these variances. So it's very um, informative for the manager to do this, but you have to have the right accounting. Remember, it's your financial accounting people doing this, getting the information from the managerial side of the house if you have that large of a company. It's just an added layer of, of accounting and you have to have resources as a company to do this. And that's the end of the chapter. So what I want to do is flip over to my Excel sheet. Okay, this is S11-3. Please note, I already mentioned this, but all the variances in my accounting lab are entered as positives with the U and the F. And I'm showing you, if you were doing it in Excel, um, how you would do this. So in S11-3, you have your actual direct material unit per cost given in the book and there's your standard and when you subtract them you get a positive value because your actual is less than your standard so that's favorable here's the units so you take the units times the favorable variance and that's a favorable overall variance then they give you the actual direct materials purchase less the standard and this time around it's unfavorable times the cost per unit giving you an unfavorable variance. Okay, so that's S11-3. S11-4, similar, um, you have your direct material cost per unit and your standard direct material cost. So once again, it's unfavorable because the actual is bigger than the standard. And then I did times the units and there's your math. Then you have materials per, uh, purchased and used and your standard materials so you actually get a favorable this time times your unit cost is your quantity variance and one more is 11-8 I'm going to show you this one was looking for your actual fixed manufacturing overhead um, minus your budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead is your fixed budgeted overhead variance so I put it in an equation this way so you could see it so you have your actual from the problem and your budget and you get a variance of 3000 notice 
I'm doing the math in Excel showing you the negative and it's unfavorable. In my accounting lab, you would put the positive in and put a, a U next to it. Requirement two wanted you to get your fixed overhead volume variance which needed you to compare budget to standard and they gave you the information in the problem 1200 dog houses takes two hours to produce one dog house and it's twenty four um, dollars per machine hour so your standard is those times each other so you can see that and then that gives you a fair a favorable variance okay so in my accounting lab it would be entered with the F and the U so if you have any questions, send me an email. Hopefully these examples help you out. As I mentioned, I'd make yourself a little cheat sheet of, of equations and then work through the problems. Thanks.